promise me place. Okay, 10. Love does no wrong to others, so love fulfills the requirements of God's law. This is all more urgent, for we know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up from your sal- for your salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armor of right living. Because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Mm. Wow, that kind of explains it a little bit better. Amen. Mm. We are to love our neighbors. So who's our neighbor? Mm. Hmm. Everyone we meet yes. and know. They're our neighbors. Howdy, neighbor. Mm. <clears throat> they are our neighbors. They are, we are not to harm them. Didn't we just read that in 10? Yeah. Bring no harm to your neighbor. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to look at this real closely. We are not to harm them. <clears throat> we are not to say anything about anyone that does them wrong because it would harm them. Mm-hmm. Hmm. We shouldn't judge people. We shouldn't go around gossiping about people because that's going to harm them. What were we just told? Not to harm our neighbor. So we got to watch what we say, right? We can't be talking bad about our neighbors. They may treat you bad or do something bad to you, but you can't return. Two wrongs don't make a right. The Bible tells us bring no harm to your neighbor. So if anything, pray for them. Lord, correct them. Something ain't right. Or, if you did something wrong to them previously, then go ask them to forgive you that you did wrong. If they won't listen to you, then just let God know. But by all means, take care of the matter. We are to be able to take no account of a suffered wrong. God's kind of love is long-suffering, patient, and kind. Please understand that many believers, and I want you to get this, this God kind of love is long-suffering, patient, and kind. But many believers don't walk in love when they don't walk in love. <clears throat> they don't get healed when they're sick. Because you have all against your neighbor. And here you are asking to get healed, but because you have all against your neighbor, God can't do nothing with you. Mm -hmm. Do no harm to your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Because then what you're asking for ain't going to happen, especially healing. Mm -hmm. Do you understand how how this can affect your walk? Because you won't love your neighbor? So... Many believers that don't walk in love never end up getting healed when they are sick. It's when they make adjustments in their heart. In other words, go ask for forgiveness. And begin to walk in love towards one another is when healing comes. Okay, Walking in the love of God is a way to prosper in life. It will bring you into victory in every area of your life. So we can't have all against our neighbor. We can't harm our neighbor. We're to be kind and patient. Pray for that person. But we can't right away jump into the flesh, get mad, throw rocks at them. 
that that's not becoming a Christian. That's not expressing the God kind of love that God has towards us. Yeah. Even though sometimes we can be irritable and we can do stuff that we know ain't right, but God still loves you. Yes. Shouldn't we do that to someone else? Mm -hmm. If God forgives me, should I forgive others? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I don't forgive someone else, then God won't forgive me. Mm. How can I hate my neighbor and expect to be healed because I'm praying to God? Mm. It don't work. Mm. We got to have love for our neighbor, not harm them. <clears throat> now, I want to talk about a little bit about this, and I don't want to get too too involved in this. Now, let me say some. Let me say how this applies. To marriage. Love doesn't no harm to your spouse. Okay? You don't hurt your neighbor. You should not be hurting your spouse. So it applies in marriage as well. Husbands and wives need to let the love of God dominate them and not just natural Human love. Okay? Husbands and wives have a certain amount of physical attraction. Physical, I'm sorry, physical affection and attraction towards each other. Okay? But natural love that we're talking about can be superficial. Natural love's is sometimes so shallow it can turn to hatred overnight. Mm -hmm. Just think about it. As husbands and wives, as being a husband, if I say something to my wife that upsets her and I don't apologize, she's going to sit and be mad at me. That's, uh, that's bringing harm to her. And my prayers are going to be hindered. Okay? I have to be able to love her no matter what. I don't, it doesn't matter what she's done. It doesn't matter what I've done. She has to love me regardless. We can't not let this, what we just read in 10, bring harm to our neighbor. Yeah. This is my spouse. I'm the lover no matter what and not the human type of love. Like I said, the natural kind of love Overnight can turn in anger. She might fester all night about what I said in the morning, just be hating me, all because of what I said or what I've done. That's not God's kind of love. God's kind of love is not going to treat her that way. Or your spouse or your husband, you're not going to treat them that way. Now, couples need to practice seeking their spouse's welfare before their own. Think about it. That's the way we would treat others. Treat someone better than you would treat yourself. Mm -hmm. That we should automatically do <clears throat> for our spouses. Mm -hmm. Treat them way better than we treat, you know, my cousin or my, my brother or something. I'm going to treat my wife way better than that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to treat them good, but I'm going to treat my wife better. Yeah. If couples would do this, they would experience heaven on earth in their marriage. Mm -hmm. Life will be so much more pleasant when you put yourself out of the equation and put the other person first. What does she want to do? Mm -hmm. Let's do what's going to make her happy. And then likewise, she'll do what's going to make me happy. Mm -hmm. And so then all of a sudden, we're going to experience heaven on earth in our marriage. We're going to be more comfortable with each other. There's not going to be hatred. There's not going to be that lack of love, lack of respect for each other. Couples are to exercise love that does no harm to each other. Putting the other person first. Now let's look at a scripture. I've said all this thing, but I've got to show you a scripture. <clears throat> Let's uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. God's Word is thorough. 
-hmm. It does not leave anything else. And so because we're studying love, we, it, it applies to each and every one of us, married or un, otherwise. But now we're discussing marriage here. Now let's look at this. But let's start in verse 1. Okay, 1 Corinthians 7. It says, Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, is it good for a man not to touch a woman? Now watch what he says. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife. And let each woman have her own husband. Okay? Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her. And likewise also the wife to her husband. We've got to love each other. If there's no love, then what brought y'all together? Verse 4. The wife does not have authority over her own body. Oh, uh oh, who does? But the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Wow. Now, watch what he says in verse 5. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may... Give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Mm -hmm. Wow. I hope you all understood that. If you all didn't, I'm going to read it to you in the NLT. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to tell you exactly what he's talking about. And I was reading this earlier. Oh, okay. That is the Word of God. Not mine. Amen. But it's important that we learn. And, and that's what it's about. Learning how the love needs to be within us. And I went to the wrong scripture. <laughs> First Corinthians 7. <clears throat> no. First Corinthians seven. I'm gonna read this now out of the NLT. We just I just read it in the King James. But now listen to how it explains it because it's a little bit more uh, detailed in the NLT. It says now regarding the question you asked in your letter, yes, it is good to abstain from sexual relationship. But because there is so much sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman should have her own husband. Now verse 3. The husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs and the wife should fulfill her husband's needs. The wife gives authority over her body to her husband and the husband gives authority over her his body to his wife. Now verse 5. Do not deprive each other of sexual relation unless you both agree to restrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time so that you can give yourself more completely to prayer. Afterwards, you should come together again so that Satan won't be able to tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Wow, pretty much says it all.